Now, of course, slope fields can be done on your graphics calculator. So we're going to sketch these slope fields and we're also going to sketch the solution curve given initial conditions, y equals 0 and x equals 1. Now, you can find those initial condition curves just by solving the differential equation and subbing in 0 and 1, but we're going to be using our graphics calculator for everything here now. All right, so jumping in, we're doing menu and we're going to graph and we're going to graph a differential equation. All right, now the first differential equation we're doing is y dash equals 3x squared, so 3x squared. And then if we just graph that, in fact, let's do that. Let's just graph exactly that. Uh, you can see we get this slope field here. Now I might just zoom in on that slope field a little bit so we can see what's going on. Right, you can see it's starting to come into focus there. Now, it's not um, unusual that this is what it would look like because, of course, um, the integral of 3x squared is a cubic function, and you can see a cubic function in sort of the gradients here. And now I'll go back and solve the question as it was written with those initial conditions of uh, y equals 0 and x equals 1. I can just get a bit temperamental, so I'm going to go menu and I'm going to delete everything and start again. All right, so menu, graph a differential equation, y dash equals 3x squared, and then I'm going to go into my initial conditions here. Now I said x equals 1 and y equals 0, I believe was our x equals 1 and y equals 0. Okay, and enter. All right, and you can see what's happening here. We're getting the slope field, but we're also getting this dotted differential equation here. This is the actual solution. All right, so that's our first one. We've got a couple more to go. Uh, now, when we look at the next one, the calculator does something really funny here, so you need to be careful. All right, dy dx equals y squared. I'm going to clear my calculator and start again. I'm jumping into our menu here, graph edit a differential equation. All right, y dash equals, and we're doing y squared. Now, that's wrong. That is not going to work. So let's try again. You can see that it's y1. So whenever we type y into our equation here, we actually have to type y1 y1 and we're going to square y1 if we do that it will work okay this is a big mistake you'll know you've made this mistake if you type y in there and just nothing appears in the graphing window if no graph at all appears then you've probably just typed y instead of y1 now initial conditions were 1 and 1 and so we can go 1 and 1 and you can see no great surprise here, we end up with an uh, exponential function of some sort there. Of course, you can solve that differential equation and find out exactly what that equation is if you so desire. And that brings us to our last one, negative x on y, given x equals 0 and y equals 1. Let's get in and do that. Um, negative x on, actually just make sure I'm pressing the right buttons here, negative x on y, y, 1. Don't forget the 1 on your y. And our initial conditions here are 1 and 1. All right, now you can see some dots around here like this um, and some errant dots around there. Now we can fix that relatively easily. We just go, I've cleared that screen now. We go menu, graph, a differential equation. Type in again, negative x over y1. And then go over here. Now, solution method is Euler. Now, it's not a good method in terms of doing this. The numerical method of solving that, it ends up with those errant dots. So, I've found a lot more success using this one. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but that's the one we're going to use. All right. And when we sketch that, you can see we've got this nice circle here. Let's put those initial conditions back in. X equals 0 and Y equals 1. And you can see we get something much nicer. We get this semicircle. Now, if you were to solve uh, that uh, differential equation, if you were actually solve that by hand, you get y equals 
plus or minus the square root of something, which is going to lead us to that semicircle. If we'd used different uh, initial values, like 0 and negative 1, we'd get another semicircle, but we'd get the semicircle down the bottom here. All right, so uh, I think that's all for this one. That's how you use slope fields and the TI.